Hello and welcome to another session of Cool Things You Can Do With Bit. Uh, in this session we're going to run through a feature called Bit Link Target. Now this feature is pretty cool and it enables you to work on your Bit components inside a Bit workspace somewhere on your computer and have those changes immediately reflected uh, and linked essentially to any uh, consuming project or workspace. The consuming project doesn't have to be anything to do with Bit. Um, here I have a consuming application, the Target app, which is just a Create React app. I ran Create React app, um, MPX uh, Create React app. And then I uh, ejected the config because we'll see a bit later, you might need to add something to the Webpack config. Um, and that's it, really. All I've done now is I've just kind of installed some components, um, and they are, you know, in regular node modules inside this uh, application. Uh, I talk about that because we'll see in a second that that's actually part of this feature. Um, and now the, the app runs regularly, npm run starts, I just run the application, uh, and then we will see that the app looks exactly as it's meant to, it's just kind of a regular header and, you know, some bit of navigation in there. Um, so let's see that start up. Let's switch around to here. Not quite started yet. There we go, now it's started. And we'll see this gets updated too. Here we go. Now this is just the regular application you can't see behind here, but there's some other uh, stuff in the corner. Um, and this is how the header looks right now, but I want to make some changes. Now, I have this header component in my workspace. So here, if I go to my header component, I run, you know, updated. This is actually what the code looks like in the uh, application. I add updated here, right? Now, obviously, currently, my application is not connected to my component, so I don't see that update in my application. I refresh, refresh. There's no updated here. It was meant to appear over here. Um, so how do I get them to, uh, to connect? It's very, very simple. I run a single command. First in my um, workspace, I'm actually going to run the command bit watch. I have it running over here. What the command bit watch does is it essentially is like an npm watch. It will watch all of my component files, and when the component is changed, it will automatically compile the, uh, the, the update. So I don't have to run bit compile after every change that I make. And that's what, this will help our workflow um, using this feature. Um, that's on one side. That's not really connected to the link target. That's just to make sure everything is f compiled the whole time. I recommend using that with bit uh, the whole time in the background. So how do I get the bit link to link up? Simple. Run bit link dash dash target. We're going to go back to our um, target application. Just get the root directory of that. And we're going to plug that in over here. And we're going to add this this flag. This is part of the magic, uh, and we'll see a bit later what that does and how that works. So this will take about 15 seconds. I very much don't like um, fast forwarding videos because I want you to see how this is actually going to work, and also to see how quick things are with Bit. So we'll wait another 10 seconds or so. See all the components being linked, and what that link will do is essentially you're going to link the compiled output from this workspace into the node modules of my application. And so that means that any time that, that this gets updated, automatically my application will also get updated, and I will see the changes there. Um, now that's pretty simple, you might have thought, but it's not so simple. In fact, there were previous kind of versions of this feature that didn't work as well until we figured out how to get it working amazingly. So now it's working amazingly, so now it's all linked together. So team application, ah! Okay, so this is nothing to do with Bit, this is just a Webpack cache issue. So if you have Webpack running your components, your uh, application, all you need to do, to do is to go into node modules, dot cache, delete that folder, and then we'll run npm run start again. While we're doing that, we can see that actually over here, the resolution for these uh, dependencies is now com coming from Spark's components, not my target app, but it's actually coming from my component application. Right, so we can see the link target has started working, development server is starting up, and now we probably expect to see updated in our application. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Is it finished? Finished. And now we get to see updated. There we go. There's a few other updates there already there. Now we have updated over here. And this is where the fun starts. So let's just make that updated three. Just to skip a few. Updated three automatically. 
And just to get, to give you kind of a bit of an insight as to what's happening, in the node modules, because we have the watch working, this compiled output has that updated three automatically compiled to it. If I run that as updated four, then that compiled node modules will again get back to updated four, right? And that gets linked over to my application, and it is also using the same this folder, so therefore I have updated for also in the application. And that's really it. That is as simple as that to get the, to get this working, and that is how the uh, the feature works. Okay, so a few notes adding on to what we've done. Now the dash dash peers flag that we added that we ran with a command. The reason why we add, run that is because if you don't run that, then you get to issues of your components using a version of React from inside this repo that is different to the instance of React inside your application repo. If you don't understand what this means, it's okay. It all boils down to what a peer dependency is. A peer dependency is a component saying, I need to use the application's uh, version of this because it needs to be a single version. I need to connect into the exact instance, the exact kind of code that's running that the rest of the items using this package are using. Um, and so that's really what happens and that's why we had the dash dash peers bit knows your components dependency graph and actually detects all of the peer dependencies that are inside this uh, the components repo and links those two. It doesn't just link your components, it also links versions of things like React and React DOM, um, etc. Now, it's important to know this as well because um, if you were using, it's the kind of an edge case, I won't cover exactly how to um, resolve it here, we, we have a blog that's coming out with exactly this uh, feature, there we will describe, it's, uh, the link will come in this uh, video once it's out, they will describe how to resolve this, but if you have for instance an application that uses React 17, your components are configured to be um, <coughs> compatible with React 17 and 18, um, but your workspace your bit workspace is using React 18 to run things. Then you have React 18 suddenly getting copied over into your application um, workspace, and then you may have trouble. If you do have that issue of different, using different versions of React between your application and your bit workspace, there's a very easy resolution. We will run through it in the blog. Okay. How do I now revert this back to just my regular application? Okay, I've done my changes in my components, I've tagged them, exported them, I now just want to be using regular dependencies, maybe I don't even want to take that um, change yet. How do I do that? Very, very simple, I run npm install. This will just destroy any um, symlinks, which is how bit links, any links that have been made between the two workspaces, and will just restore your regular uh, behavior of your application. So you'll see in a second over here, it's gone back to example link target app, the resolution of where this module is coming from. Uh, if you run npm start, run start, we'll see <coughs> that it may not work because the webpack cache may uh, still be stopping it from working. Let's see what happens. Wait for it. Okay. Just refresh the page. We may need to refresh it once. Ah, so you can see now we have an issue. What is the issue? Yeah, all sorts of things happening because of the webpack cache. So on both sides of the story, you're going to have to delete the webpack cache. It's a one time thing for every time you want to kind of do all of that development on your components delete the webcam pack cache, spend how many hours or days uh, with the components updates coming in. When you want to re revert it back, just run npm install and delete the webpack cache. Um, and then just npm run start again and you're back to your workspace, your application being exactly as it was before you started this process. So there's very few commands you need to run. The process is pretty smooth and pretty quick. Um, and there's not much you need to do in order to get this working up so, because Bit has done all the kind of magic uh, in the background. Okay, and one last thing to note <clears throat> is that like we said, npm install is going to destroy uh, the symlink. So if, you do, if you're doing npm install in the middle of trying to um, use your components, let's just make sure that that's now working. It's now working after um, deleting the webpack cache. If you want to carry on working on your components with this kind of link after running npm install, um, then you have a few options. You can either just go back to this component, the webpack, the um, components workspace, and rerun the bitlink target, or you can do as I've done over here 
uh, and we're going to post this script down there as well. Just create a very simple script to run that from here. So I can run npm run um, bit sync is what I've called it now, my package JSON. You see a bit sync. And what that does is run this command, which literally just goes to I uh, tell it what the workspace, where the workspace is of my components, and it runs bitlink target. It knows the current directory because obviously it's where I'm running it. And it runs the bitlink target and it relinks all the links from the workspace to this um, computer. You can even add, you can even change your um, package JSON to say that you have a post uh, post install if you want. It's a bit more dangerous because if you forget to take out the post install, then every time you run npm install, um, you're going to be running this uh, bit command and linking things over. So you may just want to leave it as bit sync, but that's up to you. Um, and that is it. The, just to summarize then what you did or what we've done in order to get this working, we go to our bit workspace, run uh, bit watch just to get all, make sure all of the uh, changes we make compile quickly and easily. We ran the bit link target by fetching the um, directory of our application or our target um, repo or project. And then we ran the command bit link dash dash target, target path and the dash dash peers. That's very important, dash dash peers um, flag as well. And then in our target application, we probably would have needed to delete the webpack cache. So once we delete the webpack cache, we just run npm run start and everything is connected up. One more thing. You may find that in your webpack configuration, webpack does not monitor node modules and will not hot reload the changes that you are getting from your uh, components. Even though node modules sees those changes, it doesn't actually make it to your application. There is a way around that. There's a very simple webpack config that you need to add. It is over here, watch options. Um, <clears throat> if you need to add it, add exactly this and you add your organization in there. So I'm adding bit design because that's the organization, the components that I am consuming. But you add your organization, delete the webpack cache, restart your um, application, and then you should get the hot reloading working well. Um, we're gonna put this in the comments down below as well. And that's it. You have your bit link target working as it should.